This video was sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another review and today I'm going to be taking a look at something a little bit different to what you would normally see on here. This right here is the LEGO Star Wars The Razor Crest. And of course, this is from The Mandalorian. So first off, I will say that I honestly do love The Mandalorian, that's why I bought this right here. I haven't built a LEGO set in, what, 20 years or something like that? Honestly, what I really wanted was that awesome Hot Toys Best Car Armor Mandalorian, but that's not out till something stupid like 2099 or something like that. So I had to make do with this tiny little minifigure version right here. So anyway, this will be mainly coming from the perspective of someone who does not build LEGO. So the first thing that I would have noticed is the box to me seemed a little bit, only a little bit on the small side for something that is so pricey. Well, medium pricey. Lego is pricey. I think it cost in and around 120 euro. I'm not sure, so I'll pop the price right up on the screen right now. And if you're used to my normal videos, I will compare this right now to a Gundam box just so you can get the general gist of the size. It's just a little bit bigger than what we would see with a master grade Gundam. That would be from this front or top perspective, but from the side, it is a lot thinner. For some reason, this here box does not want to stay closed. Build me. I will, I will have got a whole lot of other things to do, like it's taken me ages to get through the Master Grade EX. But that will be coming sometime this week, hopefully. What day is it? But anyway, that is enough babbling about that sort of stuff. Let's get right into the meat of this and check out the Razor Crest itself. But first... Hey, I'm Spooky the Neck Gremlin, and my hobbies include data theft, tracing, surveillance, and commercial targeting. But oh no, someone I hacked put a price on my head, and now a bounty hunter has come to collect! I can bring you in warm, or I can bring you in gold. But little did he know that I, Spooky, tracked his ship all the way from a galaxy far, far away to my secret base in the bogs of Ireland using... <laughs> If only he had used Surfshark VPN to secure his digital life, he could have hid his ship's IP address. Masking his IP address is essential to becoming private online. A VPN makes sure that your city, country, and torrent download history aren't linked to your identity. Now just wait till he falls into my trap. <laughs> what the? Is that dog pee? I knew I should have worn shoes. Huh, I'm not getting paid enough for this. I'm going home. Wow, speaking of his torrent history, the Mandalorian sure downloads an awful lot of hentai. An awful lot of hentai. Yikes! Huh, if he was a torrenting enthusiast like me, Spooky, he could prevent threatening letters from his ISP when he torrents, and simply connect to a VPN and enjoy P2P sharing privately. So if you don't want everyone in the galaxy knowing what you do online, then you better get yourself Surfshark VPN and enter the promo code MECHA to get 83% off and three extra months are free, link in the description. This is the way. Anyway, there is that Lego Razor Crest in all of its glory. And the first thing I'll mention about this is I forgot just how tough Lego feels. This is crazy solid. Anyway, as for what we get in the box, that of course is the Razor Crest itself. As well as that, we've also got minifigures of the child, also known as Baby Yoda by people who look like this. <laughs> Grief Karga, a scout trooper, which to me is the best type of trooper, and of course, the star of the show, IG-11. Oh, we also have this guy as well. And on top of that, we have three, count them, three of those blaster missile shooty parts, and uh, yeah, as you can see, I've already lost one from shooting them around the place, so I kind of stopped, uh, so you know, I'd have some for the review. It's kind of important. But yeah, these guys right here, extremely easy to lose, because this thing can really shoot. We'll take a look at that a little bit later. On the whole, after putting this together, you do get quite a lot in the box, and the size of the box is a little bit misleading, because this thing is pretty damn big. Also, I will mention I am going to put the full build of this up onto my build channel at some point. I'm a little bit loaded down right now with reviews and stuff, so that may be a little while, but there's a bit of it happening right now, so you can see the gist of what it looks like. So it has been a long time since I built one of these. Like I said, it's been over two decades since I built a Lego set. And I have to say, it was a whole lot of fun. It was extremely simple. Nothing felt too repetitive. I forgot just how solid Lego is. And on the whole, I thought it was pretty damn awesome. 
There are a couple of things that shocked me though about this. The first one's just how thick the manual was and uh, it's actually not as bad as it looks. If you build LEGO you'll know this, if you don't and you usually come here for the Gompla reviews, it's not as bad as it looks. Every page is just one step. So it's just extremely clear, and honestly almost a little bit over clear, and a little bit overkill. But what I really did not expect in here was the stickers. I thought LEGO came with printed parts. Maybe some do, maybe some don't, but there are quite a few stickers in here. They are easy to attach, when they're attached they do look quite good and not that obvious at all. But it is worth noting that you do need to apply stickers to this. You don't to the cockpit, that is printed. But as with the rest of the detailing on this, especially those big ones, up on the engines, or thrusters, or engine thruster combos, whatever they are, those are quite large. Also, one thing I learned during the build about the Razor Crest is that it has an escape pod up top. I'm sure that'll probably come into play in Season 2. Well, I can only assume so from the trailer, but uh, that is something I did not know. But anyway, before we take a look at the Razor Crest itself, let's take a quick look at the minifigures one by one first. So first up with the 360 degree spin is the Mandalorian himself and it's been a long long time since I've taken a look at a Lego minifigure and I have to say I am very impressed but the print on the body is fantastic, the detailing on there, the metallic parts are actually metallic shiny silver which is cool. As for that cape that came in a little box on its own to keep it from being creased or damaged which is very impressive, it looks nice. But the one thing that absolutely kills me is that massive seam line right down the middle of the helmet. If that was side to side, I wouldn't mind. But just right down the middle, it's a little bit distracting. Besides that though, it looks pretty cool. The helmet there is metallic as well and extremely glossy, which is cool. So it does catch the light very, very nicely. Once again, that seam does go right down the middle of the face, so it is hard not to notice it. Honestly though, it is a Lego minifigure and, well, from a distance, you're never really going to notice that. But if you are picky, that is there. Also, there is no face, it's just black. On to the next one. Or not, because I totally forgot he also has this ridiculously funny variant of his rifle. So that just does what it does, pops into his hand, and there is what he looks like holding it in as close to an action pose as I can get with a Lego minifigure. Next up in here we've got Grief looking aptly disgruntled. Once again I have to say I'm extremely impressed by the prints on these. If I get this to catch the light just right you'll see that everything has a little bit of a texture. The plastic is shiny, the print is matte, it's a nice contrast. Once again there's that full 360 degree spin. We've got two blaster pistols for this guy right here. Honestly, this does look great, no obvious seam lines, and I'm thoroughly impressed by even the subtle wrinkles on the face. Lego figures did not look like this when I had them a long ass time ago, that is for sure. Next up, and definitely my favorite from the bunch just because I love Scout Troopers, is, well, the Scout Trooper. Once again, there's that full 360 degree spin, and I assume with a Lego Scout Trooper, this has probably appeared in multiple Lego sets before because, well, it's a standard Scout Trooper, correct me if I'm wrong. Either way, it does look awesome. The detailing is fantastic, especially on the upper body. All that armor looks cool. The helmet looks awesome. I'm not necessarily sure if the venting or whatever that is on the reverse side of the helmet is actually meant to be different on both sides or not. If it is, great. If it's not, uh-oh. But on the whole, he looks awesome. Also, this little guy's helmet comes off, of course, and there is his face. And his cheekbones, by the way. Getting through them now, and next up is IG-11. Compared to the last three, this guy is quite a bit different. So I never showed it so far with these guys because I assume everyone knows how a Lego dude can move around. The arms rotate at the shoulder, the hands rotate at the wrist, the legs can kick up to the front like so, and out to the back like this, and you can twist their heads all the way around. So, compared to the basic Lego minifigure, IG-11 is rocking a little less in the legs, he can only kick them up and back at the hips there. Generally the same here at the shoulder, we've got nothing at its wrists, the neck kind of just falls off, that's all that kind of does because of that style of taper on this connection point. It just kind of moves from here to here, and if you hyperflex that, it just pops off. Because of the way this is built, it has somewhat of a neck, if you could even call it that. And he is rocking two blasters, that's the smaller one up front, and this more rifle style one around back. And of course you can do whatever you want with those, you know. Kind of clip them on the opposite way, doesn't particularly look right, and he can't really hold this rifle too well. 
Well, the stock back there gets a little bit in the way. But anyway, there's that full 360 degree spin of IG-11 looking pretty cool. The print on the head is good again as it is with everything in here. And we've got some metallic paint for that little face. So out of the lot, this is the one that shocked me the most because I expected it to be small, but I did not expect it to be that small. So compared to a standard Lego minifigure, he is very, very, very tiny. The little hands he has are not your standard little Lego hands, so that means he cannot hold anything. The head is actually rubbery to the touch, which is quite bizarre. I assumed it would be like every other kind of Lego figure, but it's not. It's not that hard plastic. It's very soft and, well, like I said, rubbery. For something so small, the detailing is quite nice, especially the grooves on the top of his head, which looks kind of like a, well, Japanese melon pan. And his body, or should I say leg, is about the thickness of one Lego leg. Actually, it's exactly the thickness of one Lego leg. There's that full 360 spin once again, so you can see all of that detail drink in his glory. And just like everything else in here, the print is very nice. Like I said, he is tiny. And honestly, to me, he doesn't look like he's standing up. It actually looks like he's sitting down with some kind of weird geometric butt crack. But anyway, let's continue. So now that we've seen the minifigures, it's time to move on to the Razor Crest itself. And the first thing that I wanted to know personally about this before I actually got it is, how big is it exactly? So it is quite sizable, it's not huge, but unless you've got a massive collection, it won't go unnoticed. And speaking of which, there it is up on a shelf for that shelf presence test. And honestly, this thing is quite big. Only if you have an absolutely massive collection of huge, huge things will it go unnoticed. This is big, solid, and will stand out. One thing I will mention is, I wish something was included to hold it at an angle or in a flying position or something like that, because just being displayed flat on its landing gears like this does make it look a little, well, smaller than it could be, because a lot of its mass is outward. When it is displayed at an angle, it does look really cool. You get to see a lot more of it. It is most definitely recognizable as the Razor Crest. And if any of you guys could suggest to me something that you can buy to actually display these on, that's well, better than a roll of masking tape, let me know because I need this thing in flight at an angle in the air. And as for a little bit of a size comparison, there it is beside a monster can and a manky old pint glass. So yeah, it is pretty big. So there's the full 360 degree spin of the Razor Crest itself and up front this is a lot of smooth parts which to me makes it look almost, almost, almost not like Lego. But it is very, very Lego-y looking from the back. This of course is just a standard Lego kit, it's not one of those collector style ones so that is to be expected but I still think this looks fantastic. We got some nice clear parts in the back of the thrusters. The canopy looks great with the printed parts. The stickers actually don't look bad at all. They do blend in pretty seamlessly. And on the whole, this thing right here, it's pretty beautiful. But as for what the Razor Crest right here can do, externally first we've got the blaster cannons or whatever they're called up front. These don't actually do anything, but they do look nice. The thruster segments, the intake or whatever the front part is, these have slightly moving little features here. That is because of the way that they're attached on. Might as well pull one off so you can see. So they attach onto a little cylindrical part in there. So that does give them a little bit of movement. Around the back of those thrusters, then we have some very nice clear parts. Up top, we've got these little venti bits at an angle, which can move ever so slightly. And I am super, super impressed by the landing gear here. You might be like, well, they look pretty normal, but these are actually on a bit of a pivot so they can move forward and back like this, forward and back here. So that means even if they're not lined up like this, once they hit the ground, they will line up. The weight is balanced perfectly. The same goes if you introduce some kind of uneven surface, it still aligns perfectly and is weighted perfectly when you lay it down on something like that, no matter if it's at the front or towards the back and that I think is really cool. We also have some functional blaster sections here. If you pop these clear missiles in there, be careful because it's actually hard to get them all the way in. If you've got any kind of a thick finger, there is one. Let's get the other one in. There is three in here, but I did lose one because I was trying to shoot a Gundam. See if I could knock it over. It ricocheted off something. I thought I saw where it went, but of course it is lost and gone forever. Let's try that anyway. So yeah, we're gonna see if we can knock over a high-grade Gundam using just the firepower of the LEGO Razor Crest. Okay, so... Tr okay, so I'm gonna try and line this up and... Oh, 
Oh, very close. Let's try with the second one. Here we go, and miss. So I was actually lucky enough to find the one that shot off there, so I'm gonna try one more time a little bit closer to see if I can knock him. Okay, so now we're in a whole lot closer. Try and line that up, and... Oh, damn it. Okay, okay, okay. Here we go. No, glancing hit. Okay, I'm gonna try one more time to nail him square in the mouth and see if he falls over. Okay, here we go. Try and aim and... Oh, no dice, try again and... No. Oh. Okay, okay, I'm just gonna... I'm gonna try point blank and see if... See what we... Come on, you gotta do this. Here we go. Oh. Damn Bandai builds them strong. Okay, okay, final bit of target practice. I'm gonna try and hit the stormtrooper and the child. So here we go. Line it up for that stormtrooper and... Oh, got him. Let's see if I can get that child. Okay, here we go. And... And... Boom! Oh, the force didn't save you now! So when you're not ending the life of a force-wielding species, you can store these away inside here. We've got these little clip segments. So oh, man. So once again, there is... Three of these missiles included, one went AWOL on me, but there is three. They look like that one stored away, and you can close it up as simple as that. Around on the other side then, in here we've got what I think is meant to be a bed. So, uh, Griefy's looking a bit sleepy, so he can go in here. Can he connect onto that? Yeah, there we go. Good night, and closed. Around the back we do have that cargo door, it just slides open. Just like so. And actually the whole rear of the Razor Crest can open up. So this can open up like that. This side then can open up like that. This can actually break off. Um, this segment can actually be realigned like so if you want it to be flat down like this and like that. One thing I totally forgot about earlier on is we do have these two things back here. This of course is two bounties frozen in carbonite. So that is pretty cool. They can just slide in and out of there, just like so. There is quite a lot of space inside of there in case you wanna pop in some of your minifigures like this. I will mention that IG is too tall to fit in here properly. You'd actually have to have him kind of ducked over or something like that because he is a little too tall. We also have a set of smaller doors up towards the front here. These ones we've seen before, so pretty much the entirety of the Razor Crest can open up like that and you get back in there. So one thing that did somewhat surprise me is the fact that the cockpit does not, well, open up on any kind of hinge. It just kind of pulls off like this, which I guess is fine. As far as I know, the Razor Crest's cockpit does not open up. We've got two sets of seats up front. This segment can rise forward like so, and we've got some more storage inside of here. So if for some reason you do not want to attach the Mandalorian's rifle, you can pop that in here, or any of the other weapons. That just closes up seamlessly like that, so pretty cool extra storage here. So the cockpit here consists of two red seats. There is no seat in here for the child, actually, and it took me a while to realize what you do here. I missed it inside the manual, but you actually attach the child onto Mando's hand, like this, then pop them in, just like so. And once you've got these BFFs popped into the cockpit, you can just pop the canopy on, like this, and there you go. So last up here, we've got that escape pod up top that just pops out like so. When it is in there, it does attach in quite securely, but we're gonna move the Razor Crest out of the way for a second to take a look at this. There is that full 360 degree spin. Essentially, this does look like a little boat with some thrusters up front. It is quite basic. But hey, what can I say? I didn't even know the Razor Crest had an escape pod. All the manual actually said about this is that the top comes off, but that is it. From the gist I'm getting of this, it looks like Mando just lies down in it like so. This top pops on like this. You can see his face in there. So I assume that is how it works. Unless you can pop this off. Take him out, bisect the poor fella, stick him in like this, get that cape out of the way, then pop the top back on so he can kind of almost see where he's going. But design-wise, this does make a whole lot more sense, and I guess we will see something about this in Season 2. 
So anyway, that right there is it for the review, and all I can say is I absolutely adore this thing. I haven't built anything Lego in over 20 years, and it was a whole lot of fun. I'm not sure if it's gonna get me as addicted as, say, Gundam or Warhammer has, but it's definitely something I would like to build more of. A lot of the more serious kits that are out there, like the Millennium Falcon, the A-Wing, etc., definitely have caught my eye, but I'm not sure if I entirely want to take the plunge yet. Once again, it is awesome, it makes a great display, it's a whole lot of fun, and what can I say? The Razor Crest is one ridiculously cool starship, and this is a cool little Lego kit. Anyway, as always, thank you so, so much for watching, make sure to come back for more reviews, and as always, I will see you next time. Once again, I cannot finish this video right here without thanking each and every one of you guys. Whether you just watch my videos, like them, or support the channel on the channel memberships and over on Patreon. Like Craig Jury, Greg Humphrey, Kaiser721, Tyler Sanders, Caleb Engelhardt, Sean T, and the Ambassador for Asymmetric Cats.